When I was in France, I studied with Marcel Mule in Paris. At that time, I was playing a LeBlanc saxophone, and every day I did my practicing at the LeBlanc factory. At the LeBlanc factory was a great acoustician, Charles Ouvnagel. And I had the pleasure of speaking with Monsieur Ouvnagel every day. We talked about acoustics and about how the saxophone works and many things about the construction of the saxophone. It was very interesting for me. And when I returned to America, it was a time when, when Mr. Kawakami, president of, of Nihongaki, uh, wanted somebody to work with the development of a new saxophone. And so the president of LeBlanc in America was a good friend of Mr. Kawakami. So when Mr. Kawakami asked his recommendation, he recommended me. And so then I came to Japan and had a, an interview with uh, the people at Yamaha. And that's what began our relationship. That was in 1972. We started with three basic principles. We needed acoustically a good instrument that is where we place the tone holes, the taper, the acoustics of the instrument. Secondly, we needed to have a very good mechanism. Everything worked very well. The third point was artistic feeling. So we could have a good construction, a good acoustical design, but maybe it didn't feel quite right to the player. There are very small points sometimes that we have to change. So there was no one particular episode, but it was working on these three points. And that is when I learned the expression, shippai wa seko no moto. It, it's, it's really true. And so that's how we worked. And we had eight or nine prototypes before we developed the 62. It took us five or six years. So as we were working on developing the 62, we were looking for an instrument with very good intonation, very good technical response, and also we needed an instrument that was very uh, dependable and, and, and had a very good construction. And I think we, we achieved all those points. I was very, very happy with the result. I am still happy with the result. And along this, in this process, what was most important is that this was a team effort. This was not just one person doing things, but we had an excellent team where we worked together. This included the mathematics that we need, the acoustical equations that we needed, the technical designs, all of the things that go together that we already spoke about. It was the result from this wonderful team that we had. So I felt very good about that. There were so many episodes, so many different stories, because when we were testing, what we learned, what we all learned, our team, what we learned was there are many, many, many variables. There are many different points that we had to consider. For example, if we take just this neck part of the saxophone, just this. There are many possibilities. So we, we did many tests just for this one part, which is very, very important. It affects the whole instrument. And sometimes when we did these tests, I wanted to be blindfolded. I didn't want to see. So I had a blindfold and 
they would give me this neck, this neck, this. So I kept trying that way. So that is one of the one of the episodes that I found was very, very helpful because we we must always listen with our ears, not with our eyes. Not what it looks like, but what is the what is the sound? So this is one thing that, that, that we worked on uh, very much. And then uh, another, another thing that happened, uh, I remember very clearly, was that we had so many different players who would come in, uh, Japanese players, who would try. Sometimes we would ask them to try the prototype. And one time, I remember, that this player, I don't remember the player's name, but he said, the low E flat is too low. It's too, too low. Well, E flat is the only note that comes out here by the back of the instrument. And he was holding the instrument so close to his body that it wasn't able to sound. And he didn't realize that. So we, we, we would speak of that. And uh, that was something I, I remembered uh, quite, uh, quite clearly. One thing that we learned was always, when we tested, always be in the same position. So, for example, if I was testing here, this instrument, fine. Now, if I'm given another instrument, I stay in this position. I don't stand up now, because that gives a different feeling uh, of the result. So. That, that was another thing that, that we, we, uh, we learned as we went along, to be very consistent. And another thing that w we, we all discovered was the position on the mouthpiece, of the, uh, the position of the mouthpiece here. If we change this position, it changes the feeling of the instrument and the in intonation. And so one of the things that came out of all of this is what I call the triangle. That is, we start with a pitch, and uh, uh, here we always tuned our instruments to 442, A442. We start with this, number one. Number two, then we put the mouthpiece on to tune. That's called tuning. And then, if the air and the embouchure are good, then you can control the intonation. So the, that's a kind of triangle that we use. It starts with, of course, it starts with a good instrument. And then to get the pitch level, and then from there we can go to this air embouchure intonation. And so we actually had a triangle. We had it on the, on the board. We all were looking at it. This is, this is our objective.